Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. This week, we're continuing our conversation with Jean LaRose, the longtime CEO of APTN, who has announced he will be leaving the network at the end of 2019. John has been at the helm of the network for 17 of its 20 years, and at first, it was a rocky road. That assessment was right. We were nearly six million in the red, and uh, we had there was no way we could have continued that way for any length of time. So, it meant drastic uh, changes, drastic measures, and um, those uh, we we did what we had to do uh, for the betterment of the network and to make sure it would still be here today. But the milestones have been stacking up, including APTN's participation in the 2010 Winter Olympic Games. Here all of a sudden the little network that couldn't became the little network that could. And what the team here did uh, is second to none. We, you know, we've actually done, created history a few times when it comes to Indigenous achievements, and that is certainly one of them. And Rogers' hometown hockey in Cree. Something like this also connects with Canadians, not only with our community, but with Canadians who are, have shown an interest in who we are, what we do, and I think it's the type of event that will help open doors in our relationship with Canada. We pick up the conversation now with the evolution of Indigenous Day Live, now in its 13th year. IDL started as a concert in the park outside of APTN headquarters in Winnipeg. Well, I think when you look at how it started, which was a lunchtime little concert on the park outside here, the goal there was really, again, to highlight the, our culture, our traditions, our history, but also our musicians. The, the first year, it was a very small event. As it kept growing, the goal was to try to bring in more and more Canadians to not only participate and share, but to get a better understanding. And we've seen years where here in Winnipeg, we attracted more people to Indigenous Day Live, at the time it was called Aboriginal Day Live, uh, to our events on June 21st than Canada Day did for Canada Day events. Um, and I think what it did is, first of all, our community came out in droves because it was their day, it was a family day attached to it, and that was the goal as the, the team here evolved the story and uh, the, the show and the, the program. And uh, for that, I mean, there is one person who really deserves a lot of credit, and that's uh, APTN's uh, chief operating officer, Sky, Sky Bridges. Sky is the one who had the vision to grow that into something that would truly reflect um, sort of a, a, our, many of our family traditions, which is to get families together, get them to celebrate together, have events for the entire family, and then have a concert, have a feast, everything else. So we had the, he brought in the food trucks, he brought in various tents with artists, what have you. Uh, kids could get face paintings, they could do activities, they could hear elder stories. So he really had the vision to build it up. And I think what it is today is, uh, is really a testament to the work that he put in to make that day uh, what it is now. And in, nine, in 2017, um, when uh, we were discussing with Heritage about the, uh, the, the, that year's events, we actually pitched to them that we could be in more than just two or three cities. We actually pitched eight cities. They came back and accepted the challenge, which meant that for us it was again uh, creating something that you know, others said, well, it's pretty impossible to mm -hmm. sort of manage eight cities in one event, one concert. It's not going to work. But again, the team here managed to pull it through. We were in eight cities. We did have shows everywhere. Uh, some of them were beset by a bit of weather, like Ottawa got partly rained out. Um, other cities had different challenges, but that was weather-wise. It wasn't technical-wise. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did put the shows together, and out of it came something that, uh, again, is uh, unique and is an accomplishment of the uh, the entire, uh, you know, the operations team, the, uh, the technical team, as well as the programming and marketing teams here, 
everybody got together and pulled it off. So uh, I think Indigenous Day is a reflection of who we are as peoples, but it's also meant to be a stage where Canadians are invited in to join with us, celebrate with us, and get to know us better and sort of get rid of their misconceptions, their stereotypes, and their views about our community. It's a way for them to learn who we truly are. You mentioned uh, Lumi, uh, APTN's on-demand service. Uh, was that just a, a natural move for the, the company to have to um, move in that direction? It's something that we had been toying with for a few years. The issue again was the we had an infrastructure that was, was would not have allowed us to do it. We were while we had gone digital, there were still some elements of it that needed to be upgraded. We needed a whole bank of servers. We need a whole new uh, digital asset management system that didn't exist. So we had to build it over the years. But the goal has been as people started to move to transition to different ways of consuming the content we produce, we knew we had to get there someday or else we just wouldn't have an audience. Uh, the, uh, it took us a bit longer to, to launch Lumi than we had initially expected. We initially thought that maybe a year and a half ago or so we could have been up, but uh, here we are now. We've launched it on June 3rd. Uh, over the course of the summer, we're adding inventory to it. I think right now we may have about 40 tiles on it. By the end of the summer, we hope to have at least 300 uh, tiles or hours of content uh, to be offered and then keep building it up. So, but that's where our audience has been telling us for the last two years they're going. We've seen a huge spike in use of tablets, smartphones, what have you, by our community compared to, let's say, early, earlier this decade until maybe 2015. It was fairly flat, and then all of a sudden it shot up. Uh, and we have to respond to that. If that's where they are and we're not there, then they're going to turn to somebody else for their uh, entertainment to view content and unfortunately won't be there. So that's, that was the impetus for it. Another uh, bold initiative was the planned move into the U.S. television market, uh, one believed to be underserved or, or not even served at all. And when announced in 2016, there was a story saying it could be up and running in a year. Where does that initiative sit today? Well, since that moment of, um, how would I call it, uh, sort of giddiness, where we were getting very favorable uh, uh, opportunities um, in discussion in the U.S., uh, the election of a new president came around and really changed the landscape. Uh, it certainly, I don't know that there's any one element that we can put our finger on, but all of a sudden the uh, distributors over there, what we uh, call the cable companies here, but they're cable, but they're also, uh, they're called MSOs, so I'm not sure exactly what the term means, uh, suddenly backed away and said, well, we're not sure now is the time to launch anything new, so we like what you're doing, but we're not ready for it. So it sort of sat on the back burner. What we hope to do with Lumi now, now that it's launched, is within a year, uh, possibly, acquire the necessary rights to also extend Lumi into the U.S. and that might be the way we'll go into the U.S. since the audience over there is quite often no difference than here. They'll be looking to online for their content. They'll be looking to uh, access it on whatever plat platform they have. So it'll probably be, it, it may actually have been a blessing in disguise that we didn't launch a TV channel that all of a sudden became redundant after four or five years. So maybe the fact that it did play out this way uh, will work out in our favor. I had the pleasure of being at the Transformational Awards in Toronto, celebrating innovation and leadership with Jean and his wife, Brenda, in June of 2019, where Jean was receiving the Media Award. This is one of several awards that Jean has received over the years, including the Inspire Award in 2011 and the CEO HR Champion of the Year Award in Manitoba in 2015. Hey, Jean been a lot of water under the bridge. I think the first time we met you were still working with the uh, former National Chief Phil, Phil Fontaine. Well, since then, I've seen uh, you take over the reins at APTN and turn it into a vibrant and critical voice for the Aboriginal community. I'd have to say job well done, and I wish you and your family nothing but the best of health and happiness going forward.
Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is APTN CEO Jean LaRose, who has announced he will be leaving the company at the end of 2019. We pick up the conversation now on whether or not APTN is considering changing its name from the Aboriginal People's Television Network to the Indigenous People's Television Network, something I first interviewed Jean about in February 2015. APTN itself is a recognized brand. It's a very, very recognized and it's a beloved brand in our communities. When we talk to our communities about it, they say don't touch it. Yes, Aboriginal is sort of the colonial term for us or whatever, but APTN is us. So you will have seen maybe in the past year that we've pulled away from advertising as Aboriginal People's Net Television Network, we're strictly advertising as APTN, and that will keep moving in that direction. Uh, we've been using the term indigenous in all of our communications, publications, what have you ever since, and that will only keep expanding. And, and the reason is very clear. I mean, what I told you three, four years ago, that the brand is strong, hasn't changed. In fact, if anything, I think it's stronger. The more it's recognized, the stronger it is. Uh, our logo is truly unique. It's recognized pretty well by everyone across the country. Uh, I tend to travel. I always travel with one of my branded shirts so people can come to me and either give me heck or g throw flowers at us. But um, everybody recognizes it, whether I'm on a plane, I'm in an airport, I'm in a taxi, what have you. People recognize it and say, sometimes they put it interestingly, ah, you're the Indian network or whatever but they know who we are. They know the brand and they know what we do. So I think the um, uh, APTN will survive. Uh, whether we ever go to use the word Aboriginal again is another story. Jean, after uh, you know, 17 years here, why was this the time to decide to move on? Well, there were a few factors. The key one was that um, we had just been renewed by the CRTC. Uh, and the license was a five-year term. Had I chosen to go for another three-year term, which is usually what the, uh, the network is uh, operated under, it would have brought us to the last year of the license term. And I, I felt, and the board felt, that it was unfair to whoever would have succeeded me then to step in just at the time when they had to be at the hearings, they had to defend the network, they had without maybe knowing much about it, having had much exposure to it, because I, I, uh, un unless someone from internally ends up in the position, I know it took me at least a year to really understand the ins and outs and uh, the way we've grown and everything we're doing now, I, I can't see a successor uh, being fully comfortable in a position in less than a year, you know, nine months to a year. So I felt that the timing was right and also the um, uh, the opportunities out there to look at uh, different initiatives, uh, work maybe with some of our communities in the area of uh, economic development. I'm, I sit on one economic development corporation for a First Nation, a I, type of work I love to do. I really want to go back and working with communities as close to them as I can. Uh, it used to be what I did before I came here when I worked for the Assembly of First Nations. <laughs> so Everything we do is close to communities. You, you visit the communities, you meet people, you learn from them. But at the same time, you get to see what's required, how they need, what kind of assistance they need, but also what kind of economic uh, potential can they develop to become self-sufficient. And uh, th I think that's a good next step, something of interest. And at the same time, um, certainly the, the board has indicated that they may want to keep me involved in one way or another with APTN, you know, with the history uh, that I have, the contacts that I've built over the years. Uh, they feel that maybe there's an opportunity for uh, some form of relationship to be maintained. So I'm, I'm open to all of that. Uh, but one of the key factors, too, is that I've been in Winnipeg now for almost 17 years. My family is in all, all in Ottawa. That's where my father still is. My mother passed away five years ago. And I think it's time for me to also go back. Uh, the kids are there. Uh, the grandkids um, are there or are coming there. 
So it was a whole range of circumstances that uh, brought me and the board to uh, make the decision that um, this term would be my last. I was a young local reporter, just sort of stumbled onto the Six Nations Reserve, had no clue, and but I was ambitious. <laughs> and I called Ottawa one day to check on something that National Chief Ovid Mercury had had done that um, was uh, causing a bit of uh, a reaction in the community. And Jean was the communications guy for the AFN at that point. And uh, I think he spotted right away that I was extraordinarily green and unfamiliar with the ways of First Nations politics. And uh, he was actually really kind. Um, he could have taken advantage, it would have been real easy. But I, I, I always got the sense and like you say, it's, I've known him for 25 years now in a variety of roles, that he was loyal to the people first. You know, the institution, yeah, he was going to do his job. He wasn't going to throw his boss under the bus. But he was more interested in doing the right thing for First Nations people, even at the AFM. Uh, news has been big uh, as far as support from our CEO and that really means a lot obviously to our newsroom to have somebody so knowledgeable about news. Uh, he does have a journalism degree, he came from communications at the Assembly of First Nations before he started at APTN. So it was uh, really important for us to have a CEO obviously that uh, supports news because news is important for our communities. Uh, it's important for democracy in all of Canada, and we have to be the ones telling our own stories. I, I also saw his leadership when it comes to uh, mentorship well, within APTN. You know, there always has to be a succession planning for any uh, good organization that's going to survive. So Jean really took the lead in making sure that we had a formal mentorship program in place. And that resulted in getting more of our own people from the inside uh, getting promoted internally. Uh, he also had a focus on uh, getting women into more decision-making roles because uh, the industry, the media industry, uh, has been uh, dominated by uh, men in, in those higher decision-making roles. That obviously is changing. Uh, he made sure that, that we were part of that move. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is APTN CEO Jean LaRose. He's been at the helm of the network for 17 years, but will be leaving at the end of 2019. It's been an important year for APTN as the company celebrated its 20th birthday. We pick up the conversation now with Jean's reflections on the milestone. I'll say what I've said before for people, the naysayers who said that it couldn't be done. Uh, that people, indi indigenous people, can't manage their own affairs. Uh, you know, no matter what you throw at them, they, it's either wasted or it's misspent or what have you. I think not only is APTN, but many or other organizations now are proving those conceptions to be totally false. And certainly from APTN's point of view, it's clearly demonstrated that it couldn't be done, that we, can, we do have a voice. Not only do we have a voice, but we can use it in ways that others sometimes don't dare to use it. When you look at some of the news stories we've covered, um, you know, quite often we were threatened with lawsuits or what have you. Uh, none of them have ever moved forward because you know, we've built a team that is not only very highly professional, but they don't cut corners in telling stories. They get every fact down so that anybody who tries to shoot anything at us they don't, they don't stand a chance because we've protected ourselves. I think what it demonstrates is that indigenous people are no second cousins to anybody. We can do anything we set our hearts to and our minds to. And APTN is a prime example of that. And so are many, many of the other institutions that we've been creating across the country. So um, for me, the key reflection is that 20 years later, not only are we here, but we've broadened the scope of what we, uh, we do. We're reaching out into new areas where you know, not only is our audience, but other audiences are going. And we're still trying to evolve the opportunity 
for our stories, for our cultures, for our languages to be told and shared across the country in ways that truly reflect who we are, but in also in ways that we can manage. You know, 20 years, when you look at the other three national broadcasters, that is still very young. How do you, uh, Crystal Ball, or what are your hopes for APTN over the next 20 years? Um, I think that APTN will, when you look at everything that we've been trying to reach into, production, distribution, radio, and everything else, um, I think there is an opportunity for APTN to really keep growing, keep a really strong place in the, uh, the panorama of the, the broadcast or the media industry, because now it's more than broadcast, it's truly a media uh, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you will see APTN still grow, and you may see APTN go into new areas as well, uh, a bit outside its main course of uh, action. I could easily see APTN looking to the future in other forms of either in enterprises or endeavors, to look at opportunities where it can generate new forms of revenue to expand not only what's done here, but also to really create opportunities for our artists, our musicians, our producers, our actors, and others. Uh, I, I don't see anything uh, on the horizon that would prevent us or stop us from reaching that opportunity. Well, John, it was a real pleasure to sit down with you here today and uh, thank you for your dedication to the company and to, uh, to the people of the communities and uh, really appreciate you taking some time for us. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Dennis. It's been great because he's really um, helped me grow a lot. Um, I've learned a lot from him and it's just been um, an experience that uh, I don't think I'll ever get with another CEO because he is one of a kind, for sure. Well, actually, Jean was my boss when I worked at Assembly of First Nations. And right away, we got along very well. And Jean was a real visionary. And he was very approachable. And I worked with him for a couple of years. And then I moved on. And not too long after that, Jean became the CEO of APTN and he reached out to me saying, well, we're opening an office in Montreal, so I'm from Montreal. He said, would you be interested? And right away was, yes. I'm definitely gonna miss him, but uh, hopefully we'll still stay in touch. And, you know, I know whatever he does, he is going to be just excellent. And uh, he's leaving APTN with so many new ideas, new platforms, new visions, and that's going to continue. I would like to thank him for his friendship, for his openness, for him to trust me and giving me the opportunity to be able to grow within APTN. So I would like to tell him, which is thank you. We're both Abenaki from the same community. And we wish John all the best in his future endeavors. But that's all the time we have for today's show. A reminder that this episode and past episodes are available as podcasts. You can find those at aptn.ca slash face-to-face podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dennis Ward. We'll see you next week.